Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. What am I doing up here? Well today we are putting some vent holes into this storage container so we can store the tractor in here. I've already drilled one. It, uh, it really only took me about five minutes with a cordless drill and a two inch hole saw. We're going to put some more holes in this storage container and then we're going to put some vents in. So stick around. See what kind of fun we're going to have today. So these are the vents I'm using. They're just two inch, you know, basically soffit vents, but you know, two inches isn't very much. So I do have uh, 24 of them that I do plan on using, I give or take, you know, who knows. I'd like to get at least, maybe at least 10 on each side and see what happens. But anyways, um, I already put one in. You can see how it just kind of fits in real nice. Now, a lot of you guys have these storage containers. And if you're going to vent it, you can't really use more than a two inch vent because there's no more than a two inch flat surface anywhere. I mean, this is about two and a half, maybe three inches across. Um, so <laughs> two inches works really well. Uh, and they go in pretty easily. You can cut a hole and just punch them in. I think it works pretty slick. So that's what we're doing. All right, you may be wondering why I put a vent down here when I know that hot air rises, right? Well, hot air rises and escapes, but if I have a couple vents down here, I can create a nice vacuum inside the container. As the air enters, it warms up, it escapes. Now we got some air circulation. So that's what that's all about, just in case you're wondering. Um, again, these two inch round holes for Venting a shipping container, uh, I really think it's the best idea. Uh, I looked at a lot of different options. Um, this has got to be the cheapest option. Uh, I think a pack of six vents was like seven bucks. I shop at Menards. I don't know if you have a Menards around you, but uh, we got them in the Midwest. So check it out. Uh, shipping containers do come with these vents. There's one on this corner and then there's one on the opposite corner in the front. I just don't think it's very adequate. I was out here, you know, this summer in July when it was super hot, and uh, I opened the shipping container and I was going to park the tractor inside of it. And I thought, no way, it is way too hot and humid. Uh, the tractor's not going to like that. So I wanted to get these vents in. It's going to be a nice spot to park the tractor, uh, store it, keep it uh, out of the weather, out of the sun, more or less than anything. Um, so that's what it's all about. Um, shipping container uh, they are about let's see I paid I think I paid twenty four hundred dollars for this and that was to have it delivered so um, in Yukon Acres this area is about a mile off the beaten path so uh, <laughs> quite a ways back in the woods here but uh, yeah I paid twenty four hundred dollars but that was from a third party uh, not a distributor of shipping containers. This guy just happened to have a shipping container in his yard. He wanted it gone. Uh, he organized the shipping and everything. I think sh he found a friend that was able to ship it for him for 400 bucks. So I really paid $2,000 for the container and another 400 to have it shipped. This is a 20-foot container. I don't think I'm going to be able to have the backhoe on the tractor when it's in there. But other than that, as far as the height <laughs> on the L series, on an L3940, I don't know what the height is on yours, but I should clear 
I should clear the shipping container by an inch and a half. <laughs> so uh, it's very close, um, but it should fit. So we'll find out soon, I guess. Alright, so we've got the, uh, the storage container vented, we're ready to put the tractor in. Here's what we're going to find out. We are going to find out if this L3940 with the BH92 backhoe and front loader will fit in a 20 foot storage container. I don't think it's going to, but I think it might if I take the bucket off and then back up and then come forward again. So I have the FEL, the quick, you know, the quick attach, the skid steer quick attach mechanism, front end part of the loader, over the top of the bucket. And if I lower the backhoe a little bit and then turn it to the side at an angle, it might fit. We're not going to find out if we don't try, so we're going to give it a shot. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll take the backhoe off, you know, not that big of a deal, but if it all fits, we'll be in business, so <laughs> let's find out. I can't believe it fits in there. That is awesome. Wow. Yeah, it, you can tell I'm pretty excited. I didn't really want to take the backhoe off or cover it up for the winter time. So the whole thing fits. It's vented, rodent proof. Very excited about that. All right, let's uh, see if we can configure this backhoe just a little bit better. I'm as far forward as I think I can go, but we're going to look anyway. Look at that. That's how close we are, you guys, just by an inch, all right? Pretty happy about that. Woohoo! Let's go check out the front end. I don't think you're going to be able to see anything. It's a tight squeeze, but I tell you what, if a 20 foot container is all you need, that's all you need. You see what I did here? I took the bucket off, went as forward as I possibly could. Very excited about that. Wow! There's not much room. Oh my goodness. All right. I got an idea. I am going to try and move the tractor as far over to that side as I can. And then I'll angle the backhoe this way instead. The reason I want to go to the right is so I can still get out. So uh, we'll give that a try and see if it makes a difference. We might gain a couple inches and that's all we need. So <laughs> here we go. We'll try again. Oh, 
okay we got a little more room to work with so uh it's a lot easier to get in and out of there now with the tractor all the way over here you can see i i you know i could probably move it over a little bit more but let's hope i don't need to get the bucket down on the ground. That's kind of my goal here. Uh, I think we're going to have to deal with what it is here. The problem is, if I don't have this backhoe locked, it's going to leak down. And if it leaks down, it's going to leak down against the door, which might make it more difficult to open. However, I can open the other side door, and I shouldn't have a problem. Then I should be able to get in here, start the tractor, get the backhoe in the right position so I can back it out again. Yeah, I think it's going to work. It's a lot cheaper than building a garage, you know. 2400 bucks. Need a 20-foot container? Get one. It's a good idea. All right, well, I got it to work. It's not perfect, but uh, I got it to lock. That's what I needed to do. And it's pressed up, you know, right up against that, but it moved it like a quarter inch, so... I'm just going to live with it. It ain't perfect, but it's going to work for me. So, there you go. Now it does fit. Then you can lock it in. As long as you angle it a little bit. Look at how close that is. Now this is where it comes to. Beautiful. Alright, let's shut her down. Well, that about wraps it up here out at Yukon Acres. We got the L-Series with a BH-92 and a shipping container. So if you're wondering if your uh, L-Series will fit in a shipping container, height-wise, length-wise, it will, even with a BH-92 backhoe on the back. So we got that question answered for you guys. So I uh, hope you uh, like this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, if you learned anything. Hey, it does help my channel grow, and I do appreciate it. I reached my goal of 5,000 subscribers. The next goal is 10,000. So if you haven't subscribed yet, all right, get on board. We're having a lot of fun here on the channel. Uh, so subscribe, like, give me a comment. Definitely answer a question if you have one. And until next time, you guys, keep on tractoring, and God bless.